Okay, so we're looking at uh, putting the Spitfire windshield on. This is, it came in clear, unfortunately. <clears throat> Sorry, it looks really good. Spitfire Blaine, Minnesota. Slip Streamer Incorporated. Uh, cost me $60 shipped uh, from uh, MotorcycleSuperstore.com. So, I've <clears throat> been looking at a couple different options that I've seen on the internet. One option I've seen is like this, where the guy tucks it in behind the front fairing and mounts the two rods right there to that crossbar. And of course you'd have to put a lot of spacers in between the mounts to build up that, that bar. That's going to be hard for me for two reasons. One, that clamp that you see for my bark busters, I can see that's going to be in the way. I could turn those in a little bit and then it'll rotate this out. Uh, the other option I've seen is something more like this, where I think Bob V uh, channel on YouTube, this is kind of how he had it. He, uh, mounts them right there at the curve point on the main bar. You have to take that uh, zip tie off. That gets it further away from you, which makes you feel more comfortable. It gets the windshield up a little more upright too, possibly, I don't know, it might be the same angle when it's all said and done. Um, it will introduce a small air gap between the fairing and the windshield, but it's hard. Let me uh, stand by one second. So this is kind of how it would be. And you see what happens is those curves on the, the corners there keep that flat part from settling perfectly. I mean, if those were trimmed a little bit, maybe with a Dremel tool or something, um, that would sit a lot nicer. But really, I'm not worried about the gap. I just want it to be, I just want it to work. Now, when I sat on the bike and I held the windshield in this position, I felt like I had a lot of room in front of me. I felt more comfortable. When I had it back here, it felt a little dangerously close. I mean, it probably worked great. And you can see those corners just tuck in right there. That's why the windshield settles in nicely. I'm going to try it like this to start with on the outside. Um, I, don't e I don't think either way looks better than the other since it's not a custom windshield. Um, so I'm just going to start with this for the one reason... And, and that is the, the comfort level, having it a little further away from me. Uh, it feels more upright. It feels like if my head was to go down, I wouldn't immediately smash it into the top of the windshield. And maybe the wind will be deflected better over my helmet or close to being over my helmet. Um, I'll catch that little draft there in the front, but shoot. I mean, that's nothing compared to what uh, this thing's going to be blocking, so... This will be my first motorcycle ever with a windshield, so this will be really interesting for me. I never thought I'd have a motorcycle with a windshield. <laughs> you know, as a as a young guy, which I used to be, uh, my top priority was looks. You know, it was all about the looks. And now all I care about is does it work or not? Is it comfortable? Is it fun to ride? So... Uh, I'll give you a post-installation uh, look, and then we'll do a ride later. Right now it's pretty freaking cold outside, but hey, it's a good opportunity to test the windshield. So we'll, we'll be back.
Okay, I think I finally got it. Had to do a lot of adjusting to get rid of the uh, wind helmet buffeting. Here's the uh, angle. You can see if the sun's not blinding the lens. It's almost in line with the forks. A few degrees out. A few degrees more vertical than the angle of the forks. And uh, there's a nice little place right here for wind to go up behind the windshield, which I've read is supposed to help with the uh, buffeting. It's supposed to decrease the amount of vacuum behind here. I don't know if that's the case or not. Um, I cut off these little pieces here on the ends and slid them down to here. Looks like it's... not sure if this is symmetrical. Looks close enough. This is what the mounts look like. Got these bars coming straight through here, mounted on these corners right here, with the rubber pieces in here. Not quite perfectly symmetrical, but definitely close enough. This is kind of your cockpit view right here. Of course, you'll see plenty of that during the end ride. Excellent windshield. Um, with the way I have it adjusted now, I've got plenty of wind in the face from the chin up. Uh, I'm six feet tall. Um, I get hardly any wind resistance on my chest. It's just really fun. Uh, I still get a little, I got a little, uh, it's interesting. I got on the interstate and um, didn't get any buffeting at all. And I got it up to a pretty high speed, almost maximum speed <laughs> that you could do on this bike. Um, then I went to a place called Windy Gap, which is uh, where the ride just took place. And I felt a little more buffeting, so I had to stop at one point and I uh, steepened this angle a little bit and lowered these down a little bit more so that now when I'm sitting on the bike, my chin is pretty much level with the top of the windshield, and I've read the tip of your nose needs to be level. Um, that creates buffeting for me at this angle. So I lowered it down more. I did not want to pull this angle back anymore. Uh, I still feel really comfortable as far as space goes at this angle. Um, and I think it looks pretty good too. It doesn't look too dorky. It almost looks, except for the <laughs> rubber pieces I had a monkey with there, it almost looks um, like it belongs on the bike. Hopefully with all this wind, this video is, audio is turning out pretty decent. But uh, there's another view for you. Uh, I like it. Um... I'm still thinking, I hate to I hate to admit this, but uh, I'm still thinking if I end up with a commute, uh, uh, yeah, I'll just end up living in a single wide trailer. I'll live in a single wide trailer uh, in order to be able to afford a, uh, a Tiger 800 or a F800 GS. I think that little bit of extra power, well, be a ton of extra power, would be very helpful on those twisty, turny, steep mountain roads with the speed limits 55 miles an hour. I mean, this thing can do it, but you've really got the hammer down. Uh, it's fun. It's <laughs> you can whip it through those turns a heck of a lot better, I'm sure, than one of those heavier bikes. But well, this isn't exactly a light bike either. But it's very whippable. I mean, the way it's designed, it's just, it handles great. It's a lot of fun. <sighs> Ugh. You know, it's uh, one of those things where you win some and you lose some with a bigger bike. Okay, so that's the review. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time.